Alpaca Registry, Incorporated, also known as ARI. ARI's website has additional resource information. On their website, they have additional links as well as downloadable forms related to the DNA blood test card. The focus of today's video is to follow the DNA blood card instructions, obtain a blood sample, and properly prepare the DNA blood card for submission to the Alpaca Registry. This video demonstrates three blood sampling techniques from different sites. First from the outer ear vein, second from the tail vein, and third from the jugular vein. First, we need to cover important components to ensure proper processing and identification of the DNA card. The DNA blood card is comprised of three parts, the front requiring information to be filled out, an internal filter with the circle diagram. This filter system will absorb the blood with the blood cells containing DNA. These will dry and then later be processed to extract the DNA from the cells. And on the reverse side of the DNA card is a barcode. This will become the alpaca's ARI registration number if this is a new application. However, you can ignore this number if you've already got your ARI registration and you're just retesting your alpaca. Obtaining a blood sample from the outer surface ear vein is on page 2 of the DNA blood card instructions. However, we will go through the steps here briefly. Gather the supplies you will need. These are listed in the DNA blood card instructions. Briefly, you will need an alcohol disinfectant, a sterile 20 gauge needle per animal, a DNA blood card filled out, and a dry, clean paper envelope for mailing. You may put several completed cards into a single envelope to be sent in. ARI will perform an exquisite DNA test on your animal sample. Since this is a DNA-based test, avoid cross-contamination between animals. Use a new sterile needle for each animal. Try to avoid contacting the DNA blood collection area with anything except the blood sample. If practical, wear surgical type gloves during the collection of the blood sample. A thorough hand washing is the next best procedure. Secure your alpaca for the process as if you would should you require veterinary services. You may require a second person to help you restrain the animal. Holding the animal, examine the ear for the outer veins. Sometimes clipping or shaving the ear can help you visualize the outer veins. After cleaning the site with alcohol, place the needle 90 degrees to the surface of the ear just above an outer ear vein. Then pull the needle towards the tip of the ear across the ear vein to initiate a drop of blood formation. Do not puncture the needle all the way through the ear. The needle does not penetrate through the ear. It only scratches superficially across the skin to initiate the blood flow. Once the ear starts to bleed, allow a drop of blood to pool. Carefully open up the DNA card, exposing the internal filter. Place the drop of blood within the circle on the filter. A bit of blood can touch the line, but avoid completely flooding the filter and having blood extend beyond all points around the circle. Carefully close the DNA card with the front cover going into the first upper slit so that the DNA blood sample has the opportunity to dry. The two separate slits, the upper slit and the lower slit, are carefully designed to allow this to occur. 
To better illustrate the outer veins of the ear, this is a beef ear with the skin removed to illustrate the underlying veins on the outer surface of the ear just beneath the skin. The veins and arteries get smaller as you move from the base of the head towards the tip of the ear. Gather the supplies you will need. These are listed in the DNA blood card instructions. First we're just going to lift up the tail and then use just an alcohol 4x4 just with 70% isopropyl alcohol just to clean off the area. And then we're just going to go right um, on midline. We will now demonstrate a jugular vein blood sampling as performed by a veterinarian. The basic steps involve a sterile needle connected to a sterile syringe. The needle is inserted into a vein and the syringe plunger is pulled back and blood is aspirated into the syringe from the vein. Now we're just going to take a quick blood sample from the jugular vein. A jugular vein blood sampling provides sufficient blood for the DNA card as well as if additional blood is needed for diagnostic testing. The blood can then be applied to the circle by a dropwise manner. Avoid touching the needle to the filter surface. The needle can also be removed from the syringe and the blood can be applied to the filter in a dropwise manner. Because this is a DNA test, it's important to have optimum sample submission. If you are doing an outer ear vein, remove loose hair from the ear. When you take the blood sample and if hair is caught up onto the filter, remove it before it has a chance to dry into the blood sample. Using the DNA card, use the first slit to form a proper cover to allow the blood to dry. The cover forms a tent over the top of the blood sample. Allow the filter to dry in a protected environment. We recommend at least 12 hours to ensure it is completely dry. Then remove the cover flap from the top slit and then fold it into the lower slit to flatten the DNA blood card for mailing. After at least 12 hours or more after the DNA card filter is completely dry, select a clean and dry paper envelope in which to mail the DNA card or multiple cards to airy in. Do not use Ziploc baggies. Although they are clean, any moisture captured within the Ziploc baggie can cause problems with the subsequent DNA testing. So please do not use Ziploc bags. If you have any questions at all, 
The Alpaca Registry Incorporated is there to answer your questions.